There we go. Welcome, everyone. And now, for some reason, I don't see Garrett, our guest. Um, his screen <laughs> went black, but oh. welcome, everyone. Oh, there you are. And then you went away. So welcome, everyone. My name is Dawn Carter at Descart on the socials, and I'm here. I'm so glad you're here. Uh, Garrett, there you are. Yes, I, uh... I I can even hear you. This is just <laughs> awesome. This is amazing. One one joy. Garrett, Garrett, where are you joining us from? Um, I'm joining from uh, just outside Carlisle, Cumbria, uh, the north of England, not too far from the Lake District. Very beautiful spot in the world. Very beautiful. And uh, just so folks who are watching on the replay know, I actually, what I think I met you maybe a month ago. It Could it uh, have been even a month? I think, it, yeah, it's not, I don't even think it's a month ago. I think it's about three weeks ago. We, we Yeah, but it's been, it's been a roller coaster. It has, it has been. And um, just so you folks, if this is your first time on Blab, Blab is really, just let me give you a little orientation because I am hooked. Uh, one of the greatest things and one of the neatest things about Blab is that you get to have real-time discussions with subject matter experts. And the difference, think of it like a call-in radio talk show. So the nice part about it is that not only do you get to interact and learn from someone who is a subject matter expert, but you also get to ask some questions in real time, which, I mean, you cannot beat that in terms of learning. You can also later on, I'd love to just get a little discussion going with Garrett first, but if you'd like to take a seat, go ahead and just um, click on the open seat. But since I am the host, this is my room and these are my rules. Um, if I don't know you, I actually will respectfully just ask you to just stay in the comments um, because we've had problems with trolls. And so I want to make sure, I want to ensure that this is a good conversation and it's of value for everyone that watches it on the replay or if you're here. I hope that sounds fair. Um, we're going to try to keep this a little short, uh, probably maybe 30 minutes or so. Um, and then we'll just see how it is, how it goes. But I am so excited to have you, Garrett. Well, it's, my, just, well, no, it's, my, it's my pleasure. I'm delighted to be here um, and to speak to yourself. It's always a pleasure to catch up with you. So um, yeah. yeah, I'm looking forward to a, a good 30, 35 minutes uh, full of uh, interesting chat and if anyone has any questions please fire them in and we'll we'll answer them yeah and so for those of you who are new to blab just a little another little orientation thing if you look down in the comment section and you're watching from a desktop one of the neat things about blab is you can type in the slash mark q space and then put in your question and the nice thing about that is if you look over on the side it'll say questions it actually pops up so either garrett or i can see it and then i can drag it into one of the boxes it's really nice it's a nice way to be able to um catch that but i would love to find out if you would um anyone who joining us. Could you go ahead and put um, where you're watching from? I love the global nature yeah. of Blab. Right now, if you look above, you see a little map above the comment section if you're watching from your desktop and you can see two green dots. I see one in Southern California, which is where I am. And we see one from the UK, which is where Garrett is calling it. So Butler, Pennsylvania, welcome. Awesome. I love getting to see where people are joining from. Carlisle near Garrett. Awesome. Yeah. North Carolina. So we've got someone from um, North Thank Carolina. You so from Greece as well. And someone from Greece. I, I missed that one. Oh, Mount Parn Parnanas mm -hmm. in Greece. Oh, my goodness. So, Global. folks. I love it. So one of the reasons why I wanted to have Garrett on here, and again, I, I told you I met him about three weeks ago in a blab hosted by a mutual friend named Samantha Kelly. She's at Tweeting Goddess, phenomenal um, social media practitioner. And she literally just sent out a tweet that said, hey guys, I have a friend named Garrett who's being introduced to blab. Um, would you guys hop on? And as I got to know Garrett and heard more about his story, about the conversations he's hosting about wellness and healthcare, I was just intrigued. So um, Garrett, can you tell us a little bit about, I mean, we want to talk about what flourishing looks like and, and yeah, what, is yeah. there anything, you know, is there anything wrong with it, with the healthcare system? I mean, you're from the UK, I'm from the US, but what is it about healthcare systems that would need um, healthcare innovation summits to exist? <laughs> Yeah, um, I suppose, so just to give people a background myself, um, I've worked in healthcare uh, for a very, very long time. Um, 
15 years, uh, mainly at a senior level. I'm the former chief officer of the National Haemophilia Council in Ireland, and I've worked on national programs around blood transfusion, hemochromatosis, and varying CJD areas around complex areas like that, chronic illness. And then I've also worked in the NHS and internationally on conferences. And a couple of, you know, we're in a situation, I think, not just in the UK, but around the world where we are struggling um, to keep up with the cost of healthcare, And um, we need to come up with innovative ideas and new ways of working. And about nine months ago, um, I decided to come up with the World Health Innovation Summit. Um, and it's an innovative platform for us all as a community to come together to share ideas to improve healthcare. And you might be saying, well, it's just like another meeting. Well, it's slightly different um, in the fact that usually in a clinical setting or in a healthcare setting, shall we say, when we when we host events, it's usually just a clinician and a manager and a patient that's in the room. That's it. Um, however, we've just gone that one step further. And what we're doing is we're bringing everyone into the equation. So it's the you know voluntary sector, the education and the business community, because we all health actually touches us all. And we need to look at it from a strategic point of view that we can all improve healthcare by working together. So coming up with answers together. Um, and we're very much, we're a community interest company. So we're set up to support our communities. Um, and our market is 7 billion people. It's everyone. Um, so as I said, I launched it nine months ago. And um, through social media, and we've reached about a million people have seen our platforms now, and we're continuing to grow. And we have our first event, which is in the, on the 10th and 11th of March. And we've got international experts coming to Carlisle, Cumbria, to talk about innovation in healthcare. But we're also bringing in people from the, you know, who wouldn't normally come to those forums are actually coming to those forums. So if I give you the... If I give you the example that I use, which is very much around, say, a builder uh, who's doing environmentally friendly um, builds, he can come into that forum and tell the you know, the, the, the NHS how to build environmentally friendly hospitals, which means that the patients and the clinicians get a better build and it's great. But also the builder, he gets a return because his family's also reaping the rewards of that innovation so that's just the example from a builder i can you know you can you can apply that to every single field um and the traction that we've got has been phenomenal so we've got our first event in march we're going, then going to roll down to um july and we're going to uh, go to london then we're going to head off to austria for leadership we're going to go to greece for wellness and mindfulness um, and then in 2017, we've already got summits, summits arranged for back into Cumbria. We're going to go to Brazil in Sao Paulo. We're going to get ourselves to Dublin, my hometown. We're also going to go to the likes of California. Um, and we've had contacts from various places around the world who are interested in getting involved in this sort of activity. So it's really about the opportunity that's there. Um, and it's about us working as a team to come up with innovation to improve our health service and it can affect everyone and it does affect everyone. I so, think one of the things, yeah, I think one of the things that was so um, interesting about what you were, I think you might need to mute yourself um, when I'm talking because I'm right. hearing the echo. <laughs> um, nope, no words, no, no problem. Um, but I think one of the things that was so innovative and what, what intrigued me is that it was a cross silo conversation. I mean, typically you've got the academics that are all academics talking to each other, or you've got, you know, the, the medical field, you've got the practitioners, the doctors who are all speaking to each other, or you've got the alternative medicine, you know, folks who are the wellness and the mindfulness folks having their own conference. And I think what was so interesting, and I don't want to make this a pitch about the conference because this really isn't, but it really is about um, having the different voices, the diversity of voices across the silos um, all together in one room. And I think that's what you found, right, Garrett? Yeah, I mean, like the response has been phenomenal. I mean, you know, to give you the example today, I'm at an economic forum today for the region um, and I'm there representing the health so, you know, there was no, you know, so I, I asked the question, the academics are in the room, the business community are in the room and, you know, the voluntary sector and we're all working together. And um, so it's opening up new ways of thinking, new avenues, um, and it will benefit us all as a community, which is which is what it's all about. 
um, because I'm very much a believer in the future of business is all about social good and doing the right thing for for our communities. Yeah, I I love that. I'm I myself I'm a part of a couple of uh, community, um, I'll say volunteer groups. One is called, um, I live here in Riverside, California, and I'm a part of a group called uh, the Champions Council, where we all work from very same idea with different si across silos. We've got educational institutions, the voluntary sector, the government side, um, and businesses all trying to work together to make this a great place to live, work, and play. And I'll just tell you the conversations when you can get someone from, you know, um, it all affects, right? So for instance, here's an example, like childhood obesity, you know, big, big problem. It's a cause of a lot of, you know, diabetes. And there's a lot of um, health issues that come across that. Well, you've got maybe a major hospital in town that wants, that has, you know, county money or has their own money that wants, that knows if they can be preventative, this can help save money, you know, co care costs in the long run. You know, you've got local um, school districts, you know, that want, you know, kids to eat healthy. We've got, you know, agriculture, we've got local farmers that have produce that needs to get, you know, um, delivered. And, and these are conversations that can only be solved when everybody is at the table. And I think that's why, you know, there's a, it's a different angle that you're bringing, Garrett, between, well, you know, the well, different there's silos. A, there's been a catalyst to this as well, you know. So I, I, I live, as I said, just outside Carlisle um, and the Carlisle Ambassadors, which is a business community. Um, and I went to their meeting last March and, th and to be perfectly honest with you, when I seen what was going on at that meeting, it kind of got my mind thinking we need to bring these streams together because they basically are a business community that are doing social good. And I'll just give you the example, like they were out painting up football pavilions and, you know, that has a huge impact on our children and on health and social care. And you might say, well, what, what do you mean by that? So by, by having facilities that the children are proud of, it keeps them involved in soccer, in football, right? Which yeah. means that they're less likely to develop diabetes, which means we save money in the long term for the health service. So it's things like that, that the business community are doing outside, but they need to be in at the table and planning and, and, and working with our health services so that we all get a return. And that's, that's basically how the World Health Innovation Summit has come about. Um, it's not just a meeting. It's about us working as a community for our community so that we all get a benefit. And by sharing the knowledge, I think the likes of Blab, this is what, this is what Blab is all about. It gives me, yourself, Don, the opportunity to network and to link and for us to establish relationships so that we can share the knowledge that's going on in the UK and in the States, but also around the world. So there's other, you know, platforms, there's people doing great stuff out there. And it's all flowing through Blab. It's flowing through social media. Um, and it's one of the aspects, like I've, I've been speaking to the NHS recently and to the General Medical Council just yesterday about the importance of Blab and the opportunities that that actually brings for our health help professionals in the long term savings wise you know being able to yep. do you know we can we can use it for a multiple um number of ways and it's all beneficial so i'm a big blab fan <laughs> yeah well and it really is about um learning from other people because there may be something that you're doing very very well in cumbria you know in cumbria yeah. cumbria yeah. i want to say cambria yeah. because there's a city <laughs> there's yeah. a city in california named cambria yeah. but cumbria you could be doing something excellent there and there could be something in Riverside that we're doing well and to be able to bring best practices together and learn uh, from each other. How do we make a difference and make where we live an excellent place to live? That's a healthy place for our kids, whether it's, you know, adding more bike lane, you know, becoming less car dependent or, you know, uh, making sure that everyone within our community has access to fresh food or, um, you know, video addiction, you know, screen addiction, you know, like, can we have those conversations that will make your community better, will make my community stronger, will yeah. save our communities money in the long run. And um, I think we'll all, it will increase the, I, I like to call it flourishing. You know, it's the, it's the level of health and wholeness for everyone that, yeah. um, you know, there aren't parts that, that don't have that. 
I agree. And you know how you spread that even further? It's using social media. So it's using, you have mm. to, you have to lead. So you have to show leadership. So I'm, I'm a big advocate of outdoor activities, running, swimming, cycling, whatever it may be, healthy body, healthy mind, all that, you know, look after yourself, but everything in moderation, not to the extreme where you, you know, so it's about getting the right balance. And I think these platforms give us the opportunity to share that. Um, and also to encourage people, um, you know, to say, listen, give this a try or, you know, we can show, you know, what a bike ride can do for you by just getting out on a bike ride for half an hour and the impact that can have on your health over a long period of time. And um, so it's it, it it's it's encouraging, I think. I think um, we've got it's just about the opportunities that are there. And I think it's about us working together, sharing the best practice, as you say. Um, and then, yeah. you know, knowledge is king. Yeah. Can you share, Garrett, uh, one of the stories you talked about social media and how there's some industries that are going to be a little more hesitant or, mm -hmm. you know, slower to adopt. And um, everyone finds that within their industry, they'll say, oh, my, you know, I'm in the legal field. We're the slowest or, oh, I'm in the medical field. Can you share, you had shared some story about a discussion that was going on on a Facebook group and you had said yeah. you would notice, yeah, can you share well, about I, that, about the doctors? Yeah, well, I mean, I, I just did a, I did a, a workshop with the local uh, NHS Trust recently and um, we, we were speaking, you know, about interaction using Facebook and Twitter and, and I, I just used the example because I just done a bit of research today, but, you know, a couple of days before on, on what I was going to present. For those of us in the U.S., what does NHS stand for? Uh, National Health Service. Um, okay, thanks. So it's, it's, our, it's our health health service. Um, and um, so, so basically before I was given the session, I'd done a bit of research and I was checking up Facebook and I was looking at the local hospital and the local hospital has a pretty poor um, like kind of 400 likes or so which is not great considering we like quite a big population um but it shows you that just that engagement isn't there and, I, and i'm not knocking it because actually what they need is development and help and training and that was the purpose mm -hmm. for me being there actually but if you then looked at the facebook group for the region that was kind of covering that locality for that hospital they had fifteen thousand members in it and when I, when I actually spoke to them and I explained to say that, look, that's a resource for you guys to learn, to improve your services. Um, and initially when I had the, you know, when I first threw that out there, they were kind of like, oh, um, you know, they're a little bit reluctant about it. But then as I explained to them, the opportunity is there to engage with patients so that you get that improvement going. Um, because that's, how you improve healthcare is 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 very simple. You just listen to your patients; they will tell you what needs to 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 be improved. Um, and once so you're willing, simple. it's so simple. Look, this is not rocket science. This is not <laughs> any. You know, healthcare. People may think healthcare is complex. It's not. It's just there's a couple of basic rules that you follow. Firstly, listen. You know, listen to the patients. Um, I used to be part, you know, we used to do a lot of um, audits and reviews of our services when I was in the haemophilia service. And we improved year on year just by doing simple audits, by listening to our patients and improving the service. And but just going back to that story and finishing up on the social media, you can see the advantages there of working with 15,000 people rather than working with 400. You know, so, but you talk about reluctance, there is a huge reluctance there. And I think whatever happens, because I said this, it's going to happen anyway. You, so, so you've got to embrace it. And, um, you know, majority of people are online now. And I think Blab and the likes of MeV, these new streaming for, uh, pro, you know, uh, apps, um, are going to bring a time where people are going to rock into surgery and they're going to be streaming it live. Now, when I explain... Oh, I <laughs> No, but but that but can I say something, Dan? That's not sure. a bad thing. That's not a bad thing because and 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 I hope I think there's a couple of doctors actually. I know one has joined us anyway. Um, it from a medical profession point of view, that's not a bad thing because um, you know, usually when you're with a patient, the message doesn't necessarily get through. So that they can firstly they can record it, but second, it will bring down negligence and it will bring down you know any sort of claims and things like that so there is beneficial there is benefits to that um, and that's going right. to come you know that that will come because you're well within your rights to go in and stream it you know you know so, so funny 
I know, and it, it is a strange thing because um, I can imagine being in the room myself and someone coming in with a camera and kind of, you know, standing up and it would be odd, but that's that's going to happen. Like, it's 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 around yeah. the corner. Well, yeah, it'll be it'll be some it'll be a conversation about expectations and um, <clears throat> expectations of privacy and, you know, that that type of thing. And it'll make for some very interesting conversations between, you know, the uh, um, the broadcasters and the patient's privacy and, and all of that. That'll be very interesting. I think um, I mean, one of the things that I. Oh, yeah, it'll it'll be phenomenal to I be, mean, it, it, to it be is, watching it, that evolve. Um, just just on the privacy side of it and things like that. Um, I mean, I, I've been around in healthcare for a very long time and, and mm -hmm. I'll, I'll give my opinion on, on this. From my perspective, um, if I'm a patient, um, I would want my, my records accessed by any doctor or anywhere around the world because it will give me a better outcome. That's, a, that's mm -hmm. so, I, I, from my experience, I would have no mm -hmm. fear of anyone looking at my private records because mm -hmm. if I'm in a, particular accidents you know touch wood or it doesn't happen but if i am i'll have a far better outcome if my acts if my records are being accessed and open to everyone and um, mm -hmm. so that's so that's that's just my thought on that i know other people have you know issues around privacy and that but from my perspective i would rather have my records open and available to anyone and everyone for both yeah, yeah for both, for both. Oh, oh so roxanne says she's both patient and healthcare worker if anyone would like to hop in please feel free we can open up the seat um yeah. if you have any questions for garrett at yeah. all um I, part there's a little bit of a delay yeah i'm not seeing any other um windows open one of the other reasons why i wanted to start having these healthcare types of conversations is i um was talking to my um chiropractor um dr michael white in redlands california phenomenal and he we were having conversations about health health and wholeness and he said so many people have lived with chronic pain whether it's like neck knots or you know whatever that you don't even know what health looks like and that there's a that we are all products of the system that we literally just take pills or we take things to um, alleviate system uh, symptoms as opposed to how do we work towards health which is which i love and i hear from you garrett too is that idea of you know if we are exercising we're celebrating an active lifestyle we're celebrating eating simple foods you know things that don't have all the additives and whatever as we celebrate those things we we may actually see you know a decrease in migraines in you know some of the things that we see yeah i think i think a very key aspect of all this as well is social inclusion um, mm. from, a, from a wellness point of view because we are social animals and we we need that interaction so even this conversation between ourselves now is stimulating all of us here and um, which brings good goodwill it, it makes us feel good and um, mm -hmm. so um i'll let i'll let roxanne come in uh, play so, so work away welcome roxanne hello yes um i have both of the uh, hospitals that are here in the area they're they're really they're big hospitals they both have the system where you could pull up your records and appointments and lab work and everything but they're separate <laughs> so yeah they can't get into each other's site and i'm like oh, it's ridiculous you know if you go to one physician for you know that's a certain specialty that wasn't at the other hospital they can't pull up your records because they're not within the same systems or you have to get, just go to that. You know, well, you can print them yourself and take them to them, but you know, you have so, to remember to do that before your appointment. <laughs> so, I mean, that's, that's interoperability there. And, and can it, you know, so, so let's, let's just look at that as, as an example there. So, so why is that? I mean, in every under industry, the computers talk to each other. So, you know, if I take the example of the World Health Innovation Summit, we can bring someone in who does that interoperability and say, help us, show us how it's done so that we get that improvement for our patients, which is a win. Right. You, you know what I mean? So, yeah. so straight away, we're seeing an improvement to care. Also, uh, Dr. Hannan, who's our chairman, is doing a lot of work on this at the moment, and he is given access to records on their smartphones through an app. So you get your bloods, you get all your results on your phone, um, which is 
which is the future. I mean, that's the way it should be. You're, uh, then you have the opportunity to self-care, to self-regulate, to look after yourself so you know what's necessary, what you need to do, which means you don't have to... I, I mean, I was speaking to um, the NHS yesterday. I was at a session with them and I was explaining this, saying that you know, usually at the moment, you'll, you'll, you'll have to, uh, the patient will have to ring the surgery to get the results. OK, which means that's time, that's effort, that's a secretary that's taking up doctor's times, the whole lot. Now, if you have that on your smartphone, you're saving all that time, which means that we can treat more patients, that we can actually invest more in our doctors, uh, put more resources into training and development. So, you know, these are sort of things that we need to we need to share. Like so. So the idea of us having this conversation now, you can yeah. share these best practices with your local authorities, with your local hospitals, and we can all benefit. Oh, you said NSH, and I was like, oh, uh, <laughs> NHS. NHS. He like, oh, went there. there. So, so um, <laughs> yeah, everything. You know, I mean, I mean, you could look at. I mean, I, I'm a, I'm a big advocate of the NHS because when I when I worked in the Irish Healthcare Service, for me, the, the NHS is the pinnacle, and um, because it's you know it's it's a different healthcare model to the states, and um, because it's, it's very much aligned to you know free a point of access so it's free for all so we pay we pay um our taxes and then we get it you get it free but i mean honestly you know i know you guys don and i, I do hope one day you'll be here now and i don't i don't want you to come and use our health service that's certainly not what I, but i would love the opportunity i would love the opportunity to, to actually just just to showcase what what a fantastic um body and group of people that work in the nhs you know and I'm, and that happens everywhere because the healthcare the medical profession around the world are just phenomenal people they do amazing jobs under difficult circumstances um, and mm. i just don't think as well that we actually we we don't um you know we, we sometimes don't value that enough i think you know we have to understand we, we have to understand as well i know we're slightly drifting but we have to understand that that doctors need wellness as well that they need and mm. nurses and these healthcare professionals who look after us on a daily basis, they need the same care and attention. <laughs> well, so they true. need to know when to go get it too, though. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Not yeah. take as long to get <laughs> Absolutely. The doctor. absolutely absolutely but it's we should acknowledge the the role that they play as well and they should be you know i mean commended for that role mm -hmm. especially within our you know our emergency services and things like that they they do phenomenal work like and sometimes they just don't get i feel anyway because i've worked with them and um, you know like i just feel that they, they, they sometimes need to be told that you know you are doing a very very important and good job yeah yeah and i was going to tell you too about the herbs and vitamins. Um, I'm really into those because mm -hmm. of all the medicines I took when I was pregnant for my epilepsy. I was reading um, before I got pregnant, I was taking a lot to see if it would help my epilepsy, the extra, I even took extra folic acid in the vitamin C and D and A and um, all a lot of things. And I think that helped my pregnancy because it wasn't planned <laughs> so mm -hmm. i took that like three months before it and what everything that could uh, my medicine cause my baby she ended up fine normal just great so there's a lot you can do with your vitamins <laughs> and minerals so you talk Thank about you, yeah there, um, there are but i mean you, you know i think um you know, you can get a lot of a lot of that, a lot of vitamin. You know, you need it. You do need supplements at times, and that. But you, you can get a lot of vitamins from from eating right sort of mm -hmm. foods, and you know, and, and a fresh produce and things like that. And you know, so yeah, it's, I mean, that's a whole area that needs. You know, you need to do your research on it. Um, you know, follow the science. This is what I always yeah. do. Um, having worked in the area that I worked in, I always. I always followed the science um, and use the facts and the figures and just, you know, make sure your data is correct before you make informed decisions. Um, and then you make the choice yourself, you know? Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Thank oh, you, I'm Roxanne, with... for hopping on. Yeah, I wish I'd go to NHS, but oh well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would be nice, yeah, wouldn't it? it, it, it it's Tell me you be... <laughs> I want a Google car for people who can't drive because of epilepsy, though. You know, wow. those, they say yeah. for EMS, 
you know, multiple sclerosis, but why not epilepsy? Okay. I'm sorry. Great request. No, do not apologize, Roxanne. So those are the kinds of things that, again, like <laughs> listening to, you know, I mean, there's got to be someone out there that can quantify that market and say, okay, this, you know, this makes sense. I mean, that's those mm -hmm. kinds of pieces of feedback are what I think um, can drive innovation. So <laughs> I appreciate that you said that. <laughs> yeah. Bye. That's awesome. Bye, Roxanne. Thanks for hopping Thanks, in. Guys. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Um, That's so awesome. I think, I think it's great the fact that we're getting you know different avenues here and and being able to bring other people into the conversation um, is great. Anyone else has any more questions? Just fire them away. Or um, yeah, I I have a question. Yeah, you mentioned well, about patients self monitoring, mm -hmm. and I know with the discussions of wearables and things, and I know your background is in blood and hemophilia, um, and there's a lot of that feedback and monitoring um, involved in there. What would you like to see developed that doesn't exist? Um, well, basically, I would like to develop what we had in Ireland, which was um, by far best practice. We had we actually had mobile devices, and this was going back well, six, seven years ago, where we monitored uh, our chronic illness patients. So all their factor concentrate was done via mobile device, which is way ahead of even where we are now. Um, and and that's that's for a, a small cohort of patients. So, you know, we need to bring that into the into the now um, and share that best practice. So, and, and to give you an idea of the sort of money that we saved just by, in, so we, we did a small investment into mobile devices. So we gave all our patients uh, mobile devices so that we could track real time data. So they would just enter on the mobile device um, when they were having an infusion and having a bleed. Um, and that meant that we were able to then distribute a uh, factor concentrate around different patients because it the stock wouldn't go out of date then. Um, oh. right so 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 you can see where we're we're coming from and you, you know in one year we saved like 2 million oh my gosh so really yeah. you were using it the real time feedback of mm -hmm. delivering what needed to be delivered mm -hmm. in terms of the factor concentrate um mm -hmm. because you were getting that monitoring actually saved it from perishing i mean saved the the um the factor from going know, out of date yeah the, also, from, from going from going out of date and what we did then was we so 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 even even for another benefit, um, we'd be able to see when the factor was going out a day. So we'd send a van down, collect it, bring it back, and then we could use it for surgery. Oh my gosh, that is so <laughs> smart. Well, you think about it now. I mean, we, we even I, I'm not. I don't claim to be an expert in the wearables, but I find it fascinating because more and more of my friends are wearing those Fitbits. You mm -hmm. know that are monitoring. And I remember um, when the thing came out that you could put on your finger, you know, to get your heart rate monitor and just get the different, I don't even know, I'm not, I'm not a medical person, but just from a patient's perspective, the thing, you know, that's, mm -hmm. that's measuring something. And, but now that we've got these, we've got wearables, I mean, what would be phenomenal to be able to not just say, hey, I walked this many steps, but when you've got chronic cases of things that need to be monitored, to be able to send that back and to preemptively, rather than waiting until it's too late, to preemptively let patients have some of that control back i think that would as a patient i would be like this is amazing well it is amazing because um you know like i gave the example there of using the the, the mobile devices for for a particularly chronic disease there and um, and you know the outcomes are a better quality of life so it, it right. means that, right. the, that the patients can actually you know go to school can get a job and um, wow. so can live a normal life so can you that's that's an incredible um benefit it's just and it also helps the economy it, you, know, you know because these people then contribute you know they're contributing into society um creating jobs highly intelligent you know all this sort of stuff so it, it it's it's a real plus for everyone um but I, I think the wearables is is a real fascinating one and as we develop you know we see these apps coming online and um i know we have um a young ambassador who works with us i was out running with him at the weekend and he he runs with the likes of the british triathlon teams and everything they do is monitored you know what i mean it's up to date the nutrition all that sort of stuff and it it really is clever stuff you know and you can actually you know you can actually peak you you buy these wearable devices you can actually tell when you will actually be in the you know ready to peak so that you're you're race ready and um, so when I was out running with, with him at the weekend, he was telling me, well, 
I'll be ready to race on this particular day in June this year. And I was like, how? But that's all through this smart technology, you know, which is phenomenal. Absolutely amazing. I just, it's, there's going to be so much, I think, within the next, you know, four years, let's just say until 2020. Mm. Um, it will be very interesting to see uh, with the advent of um, communication platforms like this, where the ideas and the innovation is able to spread faster, you know, like, like thinking of um, um, Malcolm Gladwell's book, my brain just, <laughs> just went out on me, but the whole idea of, of um, ideas uh, spreading well, and can, because, you know, because of these types of conversations, these ideas can spread. Well, you know, it, anyone who goes into the medical profession is a highly intelligent individual. Okay. Now, you put them in the room with academics, put them in the room with entrepreneurs, put them in the room with IT specialists. Where are we going to mm -hmm. go? Can you imagine right. the, 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 the stimulus of ideas that are going to come from those conversations? It'll be phenomenal. Like, do, do you know what I mean? We are making huge strides and you see it all the time. But bring all those people into the same forum and give them the opportunity to share knowledge across the platform where are we going to go like it's it's really exciting i mean from from my perspective and from our perspective it's just going to be it's going to be life-changing that's all i can say um and and the future is really bright i love it i'm changing this is you're going to love this title um I, i'm also gonna i, I want to just show someone uh we've we've just done a promotional video and I just want to drop it in so people can get an idea of what we're talking about and where we're going and, and the idea yes. about, about, you know, how we can work as a team together. Um, and I think the platform that we're on at the moment, Blab, shows how easy that can be done. Um, so you've mm -hmm. got, you're sitting in LA at the moment in, in, in California. I'm sitting in Cumbria. I see there's other people sitting in Greece. And the world has just shrunk into our living room. And we're able to share that knowledge. Um, mm -hmm. so, and I think Christiana is making it's, it's not only knowledge, but the implementation does. Well, absolutely, because you can't just talk about it. Um, it's one of the biggest frustrations for me right. is don't just talk about it, do it. Um, because that's where you lose the impetus. It, I, I'll give you, I sat yesterday um, at a session and this, this was about um, healthcare and it was all about innovation. And we were talking about pilot projects and projects in innovation within uh, the Cumbria Rural Health Forum. And there was 27 projects up there, okay? And you know how many projects went forward, actually went to, to actually being developed? Four, okay? So that tells me that we don't foster innovation. If there was 23 projects that went forward, it would tell me that we do. So if I'm a member of those 23 teams that have been let down, you're eventually going to get fed up with that and you lose your, your, right. your, your, your most valuable staff members will just go, well, I'm not putting up with another idea because all I do is get shut down. So I put, that, right. to, I put that to the panel and they were just, they actually, they could see what I meant. You know what I mean? I was saying that actually we've got this all wrong. If we're a health economy that wants to, you know, nourish and flourish innovation, you've got to give people the opportunity and also back them and say, right, it's not going to be just a pilot. We're going to deliver on this and we're going to give you the opportunity to fund and the back and the resources to do it so that there's a greater good for all. Well, that's why it's so important at, with these conversations that involve innovation to make sure that all of the stakeholders are at the table. So you've got the funders and you've got the, you know, I mean, because you can have that, um, I'll call it um, idea of uh, burnout, because you don't want that. I mean, when you have people that, well, I gave my ideas, if the right number of voices are there, and I think that's why um, when things are coordinated through the city or through, you know, folks that have the tentacles into a lot of the different silos, that's when you see things take root is because you've got the people from the different, um, the stakeholders across sector are all in on the solution. It's not, oh, I'm going to implement your solution. That sucks. We didn't think of it. It's no, we all came up with tackling this together and um yeah, i think I mean, that I, is that's why i love your conversations your innovation there, yeah, summits, there, was, there was a great conversation there today and um, we were at this economic forum and they were talking about um there was a particular area that was zoned for enterprise 
And, you know, mm-hmm. we had politicians sitting there, we had the city council sitting there, and we had the business community sitting there. And um, the, the overwhelm and the education were there, and the overwhelming, you know, everyone was saying the reason why we got that over the line was because we collaborated and we worked yep. and listened together. And that's what we need to do. It's all about the community and everyone coming together and everyone listening to each other and then taking the best out of that and then developing mm-hmm. it as a team. So we all have to buy into it together. It's like, it's like they yeah. say, you know, if you want to go, if you want to, you know, if you want to go fast, go alone, but if you want to go far, go together. And that's, that's a simple analogy. Um, I also think there's one area that we haven't really touched on and it's the trust element. And that's, that's key as well, like building the trust. But um, yeah, I mean, it's exciting times. I love it. So I am I'm good. I'm a little aware of the time and we've been a little bit over 45, but we did get a late start because of my right. technical issues. Yeah, so yeah, I'm going to yeah. go ahead and um, wrap this up. If people want to get more information from you, uh, Garrett, um, I know they can definitely follow um, at HIC2016 on mm-hmm. Twitter. Where yeah. else? And uh, also I'm at Garrett Presh and uh, you can follow me there on Twitter, but you can also get everything pretty much www.worldhealthinnovationsummit.com um, and you can find us there and you can get in touch. And we very much welcome collaboration and, um, you know, get in touch with us, follow us on our feeds and we're all about working together, sharing knowledge so that we improve the health service. And it's about us actually as a community taking that responsibility on the chin and saying, okay, Let's let's come up with innovative ideas, and also one of the things that we we're we're very conscious of is um you know don't knock ideas you know um people are brave enough to put their hand up and say something you know encourage that because that's what we need we need more encouragement um and I think you know if you're if you're brave enough to to come up with the idea at least listen and see because you never know what can happen. You know, I mean, right. just the example, I, I sent a tweet out nine months ago and look where we are now and we're on the crest of a wave um, and it's fantastic. It's great for the, re- it's great for everyone. I love it. I love it. So thank you so much, Garrett, for joining us today. And thank you um, for everyone who was in the room and also for folks who are catching this on the replay. Um, I hope this was a value for you. Please stay in touch with either Garrett or me. Here's me at Descartes on the yeah. socials and uh, let's have a, let's have more of these conversations. I can't wait to have more folks that are, are uh, interested in, you know, from the patient's perspective in collaborating, you know, making our communities well, places of wellness and, and flourishing in a community sense, but also even in a personal sense where we are taking responsibility because we're equipped with the information that we need to make um, educated decisions. So I love, love, love these kinds of conversations. So thanks so much, everyone. I'm going to go ahead and say goodbye and pause recording. Thanks.